Hi, welcome to Ethereal Mechanics, video number six. This is our first conjecture video, and we're going to talk about cosmic uh, microwave background radiation. That would be acronym CMBR, in case I don't define that later on. This is for everyone. And this is a source of Wikipedia. This is the map of the, uh, the background radiation uh, from this isn't looking at Earth, this is looking out into space and we're measuring the cosmic background radiation. Where these little red marks are, that's false color mapping for really hot and tense points and the blue dark is really cold points. And this is, um, let me just keep this in here while I pull this out. Okay, and what, what, what scientists say when you read the, the, the Wikipedia article is they say that, you know, this is the microwave background seen in the regions between the stars, the background. But there's an inconsistency with that because Olber's paradox says every spot of the sky is covered with a star. So how can we see background? Again, this is an incidence, uh, indication that there's more pain. Okay, and then they say, well, it's well explained that this is the radiation left over from the Big Bang Theory. Well explained. Well, that's inconsistent too because if the radiation was bouncing around since the Big Bang uh, we already know from a discussion of Olber's paradox in the previous video that we'd be cooked. So there cannot be any reflection from the Big Bang, even if the losses were only 99.99%. I mean, if the efficiency of space were 99.99% per light year, uh, there would be nothing left over after 14 billion years. Okay, um, now there's a scientific jargon. They use the term well explained. That scientific jargon for we really don't know for sure, but we need to come up with some kind of guess that idiot politicians will accept. If we tell the truth and say we don't know, then we'll seem clueless to politicians and government funding will be cut. That's why, in my humble opinion, scientists ignore pain. It's impossible to get funding for research for scientific theories that have been disproved. Heck, try getting a grant to prove that the Earth is flat. It's also impossible to get funding for scientific theories that are radically new, I can tell you from experience. I'm not trying to be mean, just trying to highlight the reality of modern scientific funding. So, what is the properties of this background hiss, or this background CMBR, the cosmic uh, microwave background radiation? Well, it's kind of broad spectrum. That means it kind of sounds like a hiss, like sss, like yeah, like the static on your TV set. It's also lumpy. I mean, one of the people that say it's a leftover radiation of the Big Bang, one of their, their arguments or one of their, their seemingly their points of concern is that it's not uniform, it's lumpy, it's too lumpy. Uh, matter of fact, it seems to cause them a lot of consternation even though they say it's well explained. So I'm going to give you a conjecture what I think because from our last video we realized there can't be much energy left from the Big Bang, so what is the possible source of this energy? Well, let me introduce you to Claude E. Shannon. Claude E. Shannon developed a very revolutionary, and this is a long time ago, theory of communication. And what he theorized, he, he said that information has uh, inertia, mass, entropy, all the properties of real physical matter. And that was startling in his day. But he went one step further. He took that information and said, gee, you know, in order to optimally transmit an, an information to somebody, some receiving station, whether it be over fiber optic, whether it be smoke signals, doesn't matter what the channel of communication, it could be radio, it could be anything. He said, to get the maximum bang for your radiated energy buck, in other words, to have the highest probability per watt of energy sent, the highest probability of somebody else receiving it, then you have to pick a proper coding method. And the proper coding method, as you approach optimal encoding, will approach full entropy, which means the signal will appear perfectly, will approach perfect randomness. It'll seem like a hiss. So it's like, wow, okay, you know, that's a hiss, right? And okay, well, all right, now what about the lumpiness? Okay, well, let me show you some other lumpiness. Yeah, sentient beings lump or lump together. Okay, like I said, it can, this, this cannot be a remnant of the Big Bang. Now remember, this is just a, um, a conjecture video. I don't really think that the, the that um, I don't think if ETs were really talking to each other, they would be using regular radio. More likely, if these are of extraterrestrial origin, 
Uh, these are more like uh, navigation beacons or buoy radio beacons, or even maybe a, their version of a, gla a global positioning system. Might even be space traffic control radars, or maybe all of the above. I mean, consider that space is full of debris, and if you're traveling at high speed, you're going to bump into something. You're going to want the other people out there scanning the, the waves, your path, to, to give you a path that's clear of debris if you're going to be traveling at very high speeds. So, you know, it's very likely that they're out there searching for all the, the, the all the, the space debris that people might crash into for safety reasons. Or it could be just like, you know, between our cities we have lights that light the way so we can see the roads. It could be as simple as that. Uh, of course you wouldn't lose light. You'd use radio because light, there's too many stars blocking the lights. So you'd use something that the stars don't emit, which is radio. Okay. Uh, remember, this is just conjecture. Uh, if this were proved true, I would suffocate from laughter. Uh, the purpose of these conjecture videos, and we're going to have a couple others as the series goes on, is partly for fun. It's like a vacation from rigid thinking, and it, thinking wildly helps expand the thinking processes, and it helps with real work. And again, if you could please donate, go to distinti.com. There is a donate button. Um, you know, we've already six videos down out of a hundred or more, and you can see we're going to a pretty good clip. But these videos were in production for a while, so there's going to be a little bit of a pause for the next set of videos to come out because. Uh, you know, I've got lots of other things I got to do. Thank you.